You may call him crazy, but you will not meet many men out there that are as tough-willed and persistent as this one. This is St. Louis, Missouri, 1954. An ambitious middle-aged businessman, Ray Kroc moves from store to store, tirelessly trying to sell his steel milkshake mixers, but getting turned down each time. Don't write him off just yet, though, because this man will just not give up. This desperate and struggling tradesman will rise to become one of the most successful businessmen in the world. He will continue to self-motivate himself and drives around the city, hoping for that one special order. This decision will eventually pay off in the most unexpected manner. After yet another failed attempt to secure a client, he places a call over to his office in Chicago, Illinois. His call is received by an American businesswoman, June, who is also his secretary. She reads out a few of his messages and informs him that he has an order for six of his steel milkshake mixers from a restaurant in San Bernardino. The ordered quantity sounds like a great but shocking request. Excited, he places a call over to his potential buyers immediately. The order is, to his further confusion, increased to eight steel milkshake mixers. It heightens his curiosity, wanting to know who would want to prepare 40 milkshakes at a time. Ray, eager to find out what is going on, instantly pulls out a map, traces the address of the restaurant, and begins a long drive to San Bernardino, California. He arrives at the location, and his eyes are greeted by a shocking sight. Ray notices a large crowd queuing in front of a fast food restaurant to get their meals, a strange phenomenon in the early 1950s, the first of its kind. Further driven by fascination and curiosity, he decides to join the queue and have a taste for himself. He buys a burger and can't believe that he got it in just 30 seconds. Ray is still munching on his hamburger when another middle-aged man approaches him and greets him. He looks up at the man and says that this might be the best hamburger he has ever had in his life. The middle-aged man then proceeds to introduce himself as Mac McDonald's, co-owner of the fast food restaurant. Thanks to Ray's smart and dynamic mind, he instantly sees an opportunity. He introduces himself and Mac recognizes him as the milkshake vendor. When Mac asks him for his reason for being in California, he lies about it and says that he had come down for a meeting. Mac then decides to give him an extensive tour of their operations. Ray is stunned by the speed and efficiency leading to the preparation of the McDonald's hamburgers. He meets Mac's brother, Dick, and offers to take both of them out to dinner, adding that McDonald's was the most remarkable restaurant he had seen in all of his years in the food service industry, and stating that he wanted to hear their story. Both brothers accept his invitation. At dinner, the McDonald brothers narrate the story about the rise of McDonald's hamburger stand in San Bernardino. They reveal some of their business secrets to Ray, narrating how they designed the fast service and high quality food pattern that would then become an overnight success. Ray sees the great potential that McDonald's possesses and is lost in thoughts all night. Early the next morning, Ray is waiting for the McDonald brothers to arrive. They soon drive in and are shocked to see Ray waiting for them. Ray wants the brothers to franchise the company. He reveals that he had come all the way to California specifically for them, unlike what he had earlier told Mac. However, Dick tells him that they had already tried to franchise the company and adds that it is difficult to ensure quality standards from afar, which forced them to dismiss the thought. They had already built five branches in different cities, but decided to stop. The McDonald brothers could not afford to watch their precious creations become mismanaged. Mac says that it is better to have one great restaurant than 50 mediocre ones. Ray really wants them to franchise the company, but the brothers stand firm in their decision. The trio are still caught up in an argument when Ray spots a painting on the wall of a McDonald's restaurant with a unique design, the Golden Arches. The brothers claim to have built the Phoenix McDonald's branch with the design and Ray Kroc decides to go see for himself. Ray drives quickly to the Phoenix branch, and he is blown away by the Golden Arches design. He doesn't care what it will cost him. He just wants to be a part of McDonald's. He returns to his home in Arlington Heights, Illinois, and though his business might have just taken an interesting turn, not much of the same thing can be said about his home. He was mostly away for weeks, leaving his wife, Ethel, home alone. She is clearly not happy about this and demands more attention by asking Ray when he is going to take a break. 
only for Ray to say, probably never, causing Ethel to walk away angrily. From then on, Ray attempts to continue with his milkshake trade, but he gets turned down again. He visits the McDonald brothers and tries to convince them again about his vision, a belief that the Golden Arches design could become a symbol of American culture, that it could be a place where families could gather to eat fast food all around America. Dick is still hesitant about the idea, but his brother succeeds in convincing him. They eventually proceed to sign the paperwork, which sees Ray emerge as a franchising agent for McDonald's in the Midwest. He is, however, bound by the contract to maintain the standard and integrity of the restaurant and consult the brothers for approval before any change is made. Ray Kroc has finally got what he wanted, but he does not rest on laurels. He jumps right to work. He begins his journey by visiting several banks to request funding for this project, but as usual, he gets turned down. Out of desperation, Ray decides to mortgage his home without telling his wife. This risky decision sees him secure the Duplain's location for the next McDonald's branch. Ray is a hot-headed man who wants everything moving at a fast pace, but the McDonald's brothers prefer a slow and steady race. Arguments soon ensue between Ray and the McDonald's brothers when Ray attempts to get a sponsorship from Coca-Cola by including their name on the menu. While Ray sees it as an opportunity to get free money, Dick disagrees with the concept, saying that he doesn't intend to commercialize McDonald's, causing Ray to angrily hang up the phone. The Duplain's McDonald's branch, crafted with a golden arches design, soon gets rolling, and luckily for Mac and Dick, Ray is also passionate about maintaining the standards of McDonald's. His wife, Ethel, is left at home in isolation. Ray attempts to make it up to her, and they end up going to a nearby country club the next day. At the club, Ray meets up with a few of his wealthy friends, and during their conversation, he pitches his recent business discovery to them. They mock him at first, but after support from his wife, they eventually give him a listening ear, and Ray invites them to take a look. The franchises grow quickly, thanks to Ray's rich friends, but Dick fears that he will be unable to maintain standards. The fear proves justified, as Ray soon notices a drop in standard at one of the newly opened franchises. He knows that he will need to do something quickly about it. He confronts one of his rich friends, who is also in charge of one of the franchises, and upon noticing that he cared nothing for the standard of the franchise, Ray cancels his membership in the club, to the surprise of his wife. The next day, Ray bumps into a man at his office trying to sell a Bible to his secretary, June. He notices the man's determination and eventually discovers that the man is a Jew named Leonard Rosenblatt and that he is simply trying to earn a living. Ray decides to sign a contract with him and hand him a new franchise at Waukegan, Illinois. Soon after, a brilliant idea strolls across his thoughts when he notices that Leonard and his wife, Myra, seem to be doing a great job in abiding by the reasonable standards of McDonald's. Ray takes his wife to VFW Potluck, a local restaurant nearby, and engages in a simple conversation with a man in the restaurant. He decides to hand him a contract, too. Ray soon realizes that he could establish more franchises with the dedicated American working class, so he begins to visit various lodges and religious organizations to hire workers. This method pays off, and more franchises begin to emerge. Ray slowly becomes the face of a McDonald's and takes a trip to attend the grand opening of McDonald's in Minnesota. To his surprise, he receives a rousing welcome and takes a meal at a fancy restaurant later that evening, where he meets Raleigh Smith, the owner of the restaurant, who also indicates his interest in becoming a McDonald's franchise owner too. As the men speak, a woman begins to play piano nearby, and Ray can't seem to get her eyes off her. Raleigh introduces her as Joan Smith, his wife, and although she is married, Ray still has an eye out for her. He joins her to sing and play the piano, and it is obvious that Ray has fallen for her. Ray returns from his Minnesota trip with much bigger ambitions. He wants to expand McDonald's borders beyond the Midwest, but June alerts him of a small problem. He has earlier signed a contract with the McDonald's brothers for a 1.4% profit, but that wouldn't be enough to carry out his expansion plan. He calls the brothers and tries to renegotiate his deal, but Dick refuses, calling Ray a wolf. Later that day, Ray arrives home to meet his wife impatiently waiting for him. She leaves him speechless when she informs him that the bank had called regarding his unpaid loan, 
letting her know of the secret mortgage. Ray angrily storms into the bank to confront the banker, who reminds him that he is three months behind on his payment. Ray decides to visit Raleigh and Jones' franchise, and he narrates his ordeal to the duo, along with his quality problems. Joan seems to have a solution. She proposes that they use a powdered milkshake that tasted just like the real milkshake in a bid to save cost. She offers Ray a sample to taste, and Ray is highly impressed and accepts the proposal. However, there is one more mountain left to climb. His contract demands that he inform the McDonald's brothers before any changes are made, and when Ray does, he is refused again. Ray is getting frustrated. He pays another visit to the bank and requests another loan, but is turned down. However, a young man named Harry Sonnenburn overhears their conversation, and he tells Ray that if he is not taking money hand over fist, then something is terribly wrong. Ray allows Harry to have a look at his business ledger, and after a critical look, Harry discovers the reason for his financial problems. He advises Ray to go into real estate and buy the land where McDonald's franchises are built and lease the lands to the franchise owners. This will guarantee him control over the franchises and also over Mac and Dick. Ray takes Harry's advice and gets backing from several investors. He changes his company's name to Franchise Realty Corporation. Dick soon calls, but Ray claims that the company is not under McDonald's and is not bound by their previously signed contract. Ray also goes ahead to approve the powdered milkshake proposed by Joan. Ray seems to be acting on his own will at this point. Dick calls again after hearing the news, angrily reminding Ray that he is bound by a contract. But Ray refuses to budge once again and says that contracts are like hearts. They are meant to be broken. Later that evening, Ray tells his wife that he wants a divorce. He offers to let go of all his assets to her, except the McDonald's business. He then goes on to hire a lawyer to help him renegotiate his contract with the McDonald's brothers. He is becoming increasingly desperate to gain ownership of the company, and he ends up sending a letter to the brothers with a letterhead that reads, The McDonald Corporation. Mac gets upset and confronts Ray over the phone. The relationship between Ray and the McDonald brothers has grown tense. Mac is admitted to a hospital, and Ray decides to pay him a visit. He comes along with a bunch of flowers, and inside the bunch, is a blank check, stating Ray's intention to buy off the company from them. The brothers appear frustrated over Ray's betrayal. After Ray leaves, Mac tells Dick that they are never going to win against Ray, so the brothers agree to sell the company for $2.7 million. They get to keep the San Bernardino store and 1% of future corporate earnings made by the company. Ray agrees to the McDonald's brothers' terms, except for the 1% of future corporate earnings which his lawyer says will be given to them on a handshake basis. Mac and Dick are left with little choice but to accept the deal. Ray bumps into Dick in the restroom after the negotiation, and Dick goes on to ask him why he didn't just steal their idea and start up his own restaurant after they revealed their business secrets to him. Ray admits that he would have failed if he started his own restaurant based on their ideas. He says that it wasn't the system they set in motion that had caught his attention, but the unique name. McDonald's. Ray says that the name sounded like America. In the end, the McDonald's brothers are told that they cannot keep their name on their store as stated in the terms of their agreement. They take down the name from their stores. Ray continues on his journey of success, including the establishment of many more franchises, getting married to Joan, and meeting with the President of the United States of America.